This is Alan with the Grolian Network. I have my friend Chad here with the Mr. Survival Hobby, and we're going to go ahead and show you how to do the plumbing of our aquaponics system. Okay, the next step is making sure that your grow bed is secure and level. And how we're going to be doing that is using these mason blocks. Now these particular ones are 8 by 8 by 16. You can find them at your local hardware store for about a buck each. Okay, so now that we leveled off the grow beds, we're going to go ahead and discuss some of the items that we chose to use uh, for the plumbing system. And uh, the pump that we decided to go with is the Rio Plus 2100. It had some great reviews online and it was very inexpensive. Now this particular one does uh, about 700 gallons per hour. Uh, now if you divide those by each grow bed that you use, in our case we're using two, um, you're, you know, you're basically right about 350. Now with our head height, you want to take that in consideration again. Now what that is, is the top of our water level in our sump tank to our grow beds. Now we have a, a difference of three feet. So on the back, it's gonna give you the, the calculations that they come up with uh, discussing the gallons per hour. In our case, we're right under 500 gallons per hour. And again, you divide that by two, we're about 250 gallons per hour. So always take that in consideration. Make sure that your pump is going to be enough uh, for your particular project and uh, this is great for ours because if we ever want to introduce a third or possibly a fourth grow bed, we have the option to do so. Okay, the next item that we chose to use was pea gravel. There are several types of grow media that you can use, uh, clay pebbles, uh, lava rocks, uh, depends on how much you want to spend. Uh, we chose uh, pea gravel. You want to make sure that you rinse these thoroughly before you introduce them to your grow beds. Uh, you don't want your water clouding up because of debris that's left on the rocks. Um, also, the holes that you use when you drill for your bell siphon uh, need to be smaller than the pebbles that you are using here. So we'll show you that in a following segment. Okay, so moving on to our plumbing, uh, we decided to go with three-quarter PVC. And uh, the main reason why we decided that is because our pump, it easily adapts to three-quarter. And uh, also, these little adapters here, which are great for our drainage and our bell siphons, which we'll show in the next segment. But where you can find these is at your local plumbing supply house, and uh, they have uh, one-inch iron pipe mail threads, and then three-quarter inner diameter. So you can easily glue three-quarter pipe and attach one-inch pipe and we'll explain why these are great. Um, also, uh, for three-quarter, you, uh, you would want to introduce a shutoff valve to the system, uh, one for each grow bed. Now, uh, why these are great to use is because you can manage the volume of water being introduced to your grow bed. Uh, you, you don't want your grow bed to cycle too fast, and you don't want it to cycle too slow. You want it to go roughly about four times an hour. So in our case, we actually reduce the volume of water being introduced into our grow bed, and that way they cycle roughly about every 15 minutes. Um, with that said, three-quarter PVC is what we chose to use. We'll go ahead and show you how we're uh, gonna go ahead and set that up. Okay, we've done some plumbing ahead of time, and what that is, we took a um, two-inch ABS, pipe. ABS pipe and put a lid on it, and we also drilled holes at the bottom of it. So what's gonna happen is, this is for the bell siphon. The water will never go below this level and it'll never go above this level. So what we're gonna do now is, we'll show you that in another video, how the bell siphon works, but what we're gonna do now is a guard to protect from, the, from gravel. So this is to keep the gravel from entering the bell siphon cavity. We're gonna go ahead and drill some holes in it. And you wanna make sure that the holes that you drill are smaller than the gravel that you use. Last thing you want is gravel to enter the cavity of where the bell siphon is going to be. So let's go ahead and drill some holes. Okay, while Chad's finishing this up, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to install the adapter for the bell siphon. 
Now you can find this at your local plumbing supply place. This particular one is for a drain pan for a water heater. Uh, in this case, it works perfect. So let's go ahead and drill our hole. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install the bell siphon tube. And what this is going to do is, uh, this is gonna be our maximum height of water level. Let's go ahead and glue it in. Okay, so during the last few minutes, what we did was we went ahead and filled up both tanks and we also put our gravel in both of our garden beds. And uh, let me go ahead and show you how we did our plumbing system. So first, we have our drain from our fish tank to our sump tank. And uh, we have a T here. I cut off the top of it just as a precautionary for overflow. And then there is a secondary overflow that's made for emergency because the last thing we want is the water to overflow over our, uh, our um, top of this here. And uh, that goes into our sump tank. And then we have our pump that is going to pump the water up this pipe here. And it's gonna come under our first garden bed. And it's gonna tee. And first branch of the tee is going to hit this shutoff valve, okay? So this is our shutoff valve that will allow water to fill into our garden bed. Then that pipe continues under there as you just seen. And we have our second shutoff valve for this garden bed. And so these are our two flow controls. We wanna regulate the volume of water entering the garden bed because the last thing you wanna do is uh, fill it too quick so the bell siphon actually will not siphon down. And uh, next I'll show you how the bell siphon works. Okay, so as you can see, the bed is now filling with water. Let me go ahead and show you how the bell siphon works. So what we have here is this outer four inch ABS piece of pipe is acting as a guard to prevent the, the media, in this case, pebble, rock, from entering our siphon chamber. Then you wanna have a two inch piece of pipe with, uh, with nice holes on the bottom and a cap. And what that's going to do is that's gonna allow the water to siphon through. Let's go ahead and put this on and it should just be about there. Maybe step back over here. It has already started siphoning. And what will happen is your water level starts out right at the top of your siphon tube and it's gonna siphon all the way down until it reaches those little holes that you made in your two inch piece of pipe. Once it gets to that point, air will enter in and it stops the siphon process. You continue to allow it to fill up. You never shut your incoming water off. That it's on 24 seven. So it's gonna fill back up and it's gonna siphon back down and it's gonna fill back up and siphon back down and it's gonna constantly do that. And while it siphons into here, it keeps this full of water and it goes right out back into our chamber where we have our sump and that pump goes right back up and it's an endless cycle. 